Hello, hello. Just waiting to see who joins. Let's set this up here. I think it's a little crooked. Let's see here. If you're just coming on, say hi. There we go. I'm starting to see people join. Say hi. Let me know where you're watching from. Hi, Janine. We got Janine from New York. I'm just going to pop over to my laptop so I can see your comments better. I'll be right back. I don't see myself yet. <laughs> it's always delayed. We'll wait a few minutes. Hi, Christina. Hi, Madeline. We've got Lisa from New Jersey. June from Nikta. Thanks for thanks for uh, making that uh, the sound out for me there. I got Washington State. I lived in Washington State for ten months in the, um, the Tri-Cities. Oh, we got Seattle. That's, well, that was about four hours away from Seattle, four or five hours. North Carolina, we've got Quebec. All right, we'll just give it some time for some more people to come on. I'm still gonna go try to find myself here. You're from there? Cool, I lived in Kennewick. Is, are you near Kennewick? I know there's Pasco, Kennewick, and Richland. So I actually, I lived in Richland first, and then we moved to Kennewick after. Nice. Yeah, Kennewick was nice. Okay. I'm just gonna go and see if it's my video showing yet, just so I can see your comments better while I paint. I don't wanna miss anybody in case you guys have a question. All right, perfect. Okay, you're originally from Pasco. Yeah, I, li I never lived there, but when we when I first got there, um, we had stayed just in a hotel until we got um, a place in Richland. And then we ended up, uh, that was just rented, and then we ended up getting a trailer, so out in uh, Kennewick. But yeah, I did my grade, my grade 12 year there, which was very different than in Canada. Um, cause I had already all the credits I needed cause we need so many more credits here. So by the time I got there, I was like, sweet, I don't even have to go to high school, but I didn't know American history and I didn't know American government. So I had to take those and then I just took some because I was already there. So, but it was a cool school. It was more like, like how the colleges are here where you had to walk from, um, like room to like building to building, which is really, that's high school is just in one building here. So I thought it was pretty neat. It was a good experience. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Looking good, all dressed up. Yeah. Well, uh, it's been a long eight months with the kids home, and uh, <laughs> it's not often time I have to put on makeup. So I thought for you guys, I'll put some on. But thank you. Awesome. So we'll just give it a couple more minutes. I just have to. Um... Oh, Lon okay, so it's Lynn. Lynn Ross? Okay, cool. Yeah, my husband's family is from Quebec. So all his family speaks French. Yeah, I went to Kamayakin High. Yeah. <laughs> Do I know you? <laughs> yeah, Kamayakin High was a really cool school. Um, I'm trying to remember 
the year I graduated. Uh, from there, because I came back home and I did, we have grade 13 here. So I did that here and I graduated, I think, in 2000 and, 2001? Uh, I don't know, 2001, 2002, something like that. I think I'm too old to remember now. So, <laughs> so we have, um, let's see here, Tina from Virginia. You had a few friends that went to Kamaya Kenya. Yeah. That's cool. It's a small world. All right, so um, let me see what time it is here. Let me look. Okay, 6.04, so we'll give it a few more minutes. I just, uh, no, I don't live in the States. I live in Ontario, Canada. That's where I'm originally from. Um, I've been here my whole life. I only went to Washington state for my grade 12 year, um, just because my mom moved there. So, um, I just went with her, but then I moved back after my grade 12 year because I missed all my friends and the place I grew up and, you know, there's no place like home. So, <laughs> but yeah, it was definitely an experience, um, and a memory. So I'm glad I got to do it. Heather says, Yankee born, Western raised, and living Southern here. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're pretty country here. I don't think that country, but we're pretty country here. Um, I'm not really in the city. It's kind of like a small, small town. So I grew up on a couple acres of land, and it was just always fun being in the country. We had chickens and <laughs> stuff like that. So go chasing the chickens around. Hi, Patty. Okay, so um, the most important message I want to say first is um, my last live paint night, I had some people come in and try to put up links um, to get you to hit the link, which would lead you to have to pay for something. So I wanted to let you know that there is no link in there should be no links in the comments tonight. Um, if you see one, please don't hit it. Uh, this is an, a free event. I would never put a link to lead you somewhere else during the event. The only time I ever have a link up is in the actual event. Sometimes people will um, enjoy the paint night and then they want to leave a tip. So I just leave a little link down there where everyone can leave a tip. But that's the only link, link that I ever have. So please don't hit any links if uh, scammers come in and try to post links up, okay? Um, actually, I'm going to type that just in the top in case anybody comes in late. I'm going to pin that comment to the top so it's the first one they see. I just would hate for someone to get carried into something else and then be charged for something because I would not do that to you guys. So let me just put that in the comments. Okay, so um, I'm gonna start by just showing everybody what uh, supplies we need tonight and then we'll get right into it. So I'll start with my paints. So I have a light blue. It doesn't matter what name brand you have. I have a whole bunch of different ones I'm mixing here. They're all acrylic paint though. So this one um, is just a light blue. And then I have um, a Kanakano magenta, but you do not have to have this exact pink. If you just have a deep pink or if you have a lighter one and you mix it with a little bit of red, you can get relatively the same color. So don't be too fixated on the colors for this painting. Um, it's still gonna turn out perfectly fine. And I have like a warm beige here, just an espresso brown, any brown will work. Black and then white. So as you see, I have many different acrylic paint colors here or paint uh paint brands so no worries there some are a little thicker than others some are better quality but um at the end of the day they can all do the same thing so we have a paper plate some napkins i have a cup with water which i already got dirty and our brushes for tonight we have a filbert which is just a round head brush there's no size on this one. It's just like a medium size. I'd say like a, maybe a three. And then this is my detail brush, which is a size three. 
and then I have a half inch um, flathead brush. If you don't have all of these, we can still make it work. Um, or if you have, I brought this just in case anybody has just a small flathead that they need to work with. I can show you how to work with that too. So we got those ones there. I have my blow dryer for in between layers just to make it go a little bit quicker. So if you need to go grab one, I did put it in the description, but if you need to go grab one, go grab one there. Although acrylic paint dries pretty fast, but. And then this is what we're painting tonight. It's a pretty, I don't know, it's kind of whimsical and I thought I'd paint something with some mushrooms. So <laughs> it popped into my head. Whatever pops into my head goes on goes on my media paper. Okay. Just gonna read some comments, make sure I'm not missing any questions, and then we'll start. Okay. All right, so if everybody's ready to start, just throw me some likes um, in the comments and we will get started right away. At any point, if you need me to slow down, just write it in the comments and I will slow down for you. Tell you a corny story. <laughs> make, it, make it seem like it's not uh, lasting too long. Okay. All right, so we're going to start with the background. We're going to blend the background. And uh, we are going to start with our um, magenta here. Like I said, magenta or any darker pink, or you could put light pink with a little bit of red. And then we're going to put some white on the plate. Hi, Nancy. Oh, I think I grabbed my white that's not open. Let me see here. Yep. Okay, so we just got the pink right now and we got some white on our plate. And then we're gonna put a little bit of brown. Because we're doing the background, everything is gonna have to be wet to blend it properly. So we wanna put all our paint colors on our plate just so that we have them readily available there and we're not giving time for that paint to dry in between trying to blend. So we'll put some brown. And then we'll just put a little bit of black. Oops. Okay. So you'll see here I have my magenta, white, brown, and black. That's what we're going to start with. And we are going to also start with the half inch flathead brush. So what I like to do is I like to put my brush in the water first and then just kind of wipe it off on the paper towel, just so it's just got a little bit of dampness to it. Connie says she's having, that this video is cutting out. Is it cutting out for anybody else? And yes, there will be a replay right after this to watch, but just let me know in the comments if it's cutting out for anyone else, because I want to know if it's on my end so I can fix it. Okay, I see hearts, so I think I'm okay. Okay, I think I'm good. Okay, I'm sorry, Connie, that you're having issues there. I I don't know, maybe, maybe go out of the video and then get back in it. Sometimes that will help. Okay, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna start with um, the magenta, and we're just gonna put a good amount on our brush here. Mine's a bit thicker because this one's a good quality here. So I'm just going to add a little bit of water to it. If you just have like, I have some dollar store paints here. Don't add water to those ones just because they'll be thinner already. And I'm just going to go back and forth to the top just like this. And I'm just going in the same motion. back and forth. So my brush is sweeping one way and then I flip my brush and then it's going the other way. So this way, then that way, this way, then that way. Okay. 
And I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on here and I'm just gonna add it in there. Just to kind of lighten it a little bit and then back into that magenta. So you can go right over there just so you'll have that white kind of, or that lighter pink kind of shining through in some spots. And I'm just keep going back and forth. If you find like it's drying, just add a little bit of water to your brush. And then just keep going at it back and forth. And everybody's sky will look a little bit different depending on where you added the white, where you kept the pink. So it's okay if it's a little bit different than mine, no worries. And we're just, I just put a little bit more water again. I'm going back into my pink and I'm just gonna keep going across. I just want to show you, like if you get, say you get a little bit too much of a line, because this is where a lot of people fall into trouble blend with blending. You'll see here, I, that's not really blended that good. So if I just take my brush and put it in a little bit of water and just the end of it, and I go right over that line there and I just brush up, you're going to see that disappear. And that's really the key is just making sure that the paint is wet enough and then it's it'll it'll disappear that defined line. So I'm still just going with those two colors. And I don't add a ton of white. I only added one strip here. And just keep going back and forth. You cannot go back and forth too much. That's the key to blending. Just keep back and forth and having your paint wet enough. Okay, so I'm about, I'm a little bit less than halfway down my page with um, the magenta and the white. So that's where you want to go with these two colors is about just a little bit, half is about here, so just a little bit above half. And what we're gonna do is we are going to mix a little bit of the brown in with this magenta. So I'm just gonna scoop up a bit and I'm just gonna bring it over here and mix it in. We just wanna darken it up a bit. So same thing, if you're just using um, like a deeper pink, just put the brown right in. You're gonna get almost like a, an eggplanty plum color. So you'll see here, there's my pink and then there's my new color with my brown. And then we're just gonna start going side to side with this now. The only reason why I work a little bit quick during this part is just because we need this to be wet. After that, after the background's done, I can slow down and I can uh, wait for everybody to catch up. So as soon as this background gets done, then it's smooth sailing. We can take our time a little more. And I'm still just going in with that brown and pink mix. And I'm bringing it to about a little bit more than halfway. So just a little bit further down. And 
Um, I did not, I only added white just to the top here, Lynn. So that's the only spot I added white in this whole sky was just right there. I'm not going to add it down here uh, for the rest of the time. So just up here along with this pink, just to kind of give it kind of a, like a lighter to darker effect. So yeah, we're going just a little past half. And then we are going to go right into just brown. So we're not washing our brush for any of this blending. We're just going to go right in. It's okay if a little bit of this color gets in with the brown. That's perfect. And we're just going to go over that line where they meet. Just keep going over it. If, you, if it's not blending well, if you see it's got a little bit of uh, like ridges or rutting, just add a little bit of water and just a very little bit. You don't want to go too crazy. We're going to keep going with the brown here. You see the harder we push on our brush, we go lightly here, lightly to blend, and then all of our paint is getting pushed to this part of our brush here. See it on the end, I have some of that pink. So as I'm doing this, if I push a little harder, I'm gonna get some of that pink through the brown and that's what makes it look really pretty. When we have some of the brown into the pink and some of the pink into the brown, that's when you get that blending effect or any color, any color you have. So we're just going to go a little further down, I'd say about two thirds with the brown. And then when we reach that part, we're just going to add a little bit of black into our brown. So it's going to be a little bit of a darker brown. Almost like a dark chocolate brown. And I'll show you when I'm done mixing. So you'll see here we got our original brown and then we just darken it up with just a little bit of black. And we're going to keep going down here like this. And we're gonna mix a little bit of that brown in here. So just the brown. So we've got the dark brown that we mixed. We're gonna pick up a little bit of brown, kind of like we did with the white and the pink, and we're just going to throw a little bit of that brown back in there. And that's going to go all the way to the bottom. So we'll have a mix of that brown and black mixed with that, just the brown. And if you see down here, I pushed, I don't know if you can see from there, but I pushed a little bit harder and I actually got a little bit of this pink down in this corner and that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to hold this closer so you can see how it's blended. 
There might be a little bit of a shine just because it's the light on the paper, but you'll see there it's all blended in. There's not really any significant line saying where one color starts and one finishes. And that's kind of what we're going for. So um, always when blending, you can blend backgrounds or if you're blending objects to make shadows or anything like that, just remember wet on wet paint. And if it's drying too fast, just a touch of water. And you're gonna see a huge difference from when you're trying to work with something that's too dry. Um, that's when you're gonna get uh, this effect way easier. So I'll give you a few minutes there just to catch up. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna blow dry the back of this because we are gonna want the background completely dry for our next step. So go ahead, finish up painting. Um, if you have a blow dryer, uh, give it a good dry and I will come back in two seconds. Um, and then I will wait for some thumbs up before I continue on. Mary says, what kind of paper canvas are you using? I am using a multimedia paper. So it's a, like a little book. I'll show you here. I get these on Amazon. You can get different sizes. These are 11 by 14, but this is what this looks like here. Um, I am on Amazon Canada. So this is, I think it's like $19. You get 60 pages, um, which is a, to me, a pretty good deal. Um, if you live in the States, you'll probably even get it cheaper but this is exactly what it looks like. And you can use watercolor on this. You can use acrylic. It does not, it won't go through, which is really cool. You'll see here on the back. Oops. It goes through on my pages because I really shouldn't be painting page on top of page, but you'll see on the back, there's nothing went through. And I used water and acrylic and all that. So they're really good for that. This is only because I just painted on top of it and it snuck through. But it's the only way I can get my page to stand up. If I do just one page, it's going to flop all over. <laughs> okay, so I'm just going to wait a few minutes. Just throw me some thumbs up or uh, likes or say finished or ready whenever you're done. And then we can go on to the next step. I got my trusty tea here today. What's everyone else drinking tonight? If you haven't painted with me before, I drink tea every time I paint. I love tea.
Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs up and some hearts. I'll, get, I'll wait for a few more, and then we'll continue on. Okay, I think we're good. Okay, so what we're going to work on next is um, all of our white trees you see here. So what I'm going to be using for that, if you already have white on your plate, then you're good to go. And we're going to be using the filbert brush. So that is the round one here. And now there's really no right or wrong for where you want to place your trees. Um, as we place them closer to us, they're going to be bigger, and the further away we want them to look, they're going to be smaller, right? So um, that's really the only thing, but you can place as many as you want or as little as you want. You can follow me exactly, but feel free to go out on your own. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a good amount of paint on my filbert brush. Not, um, not too crazy, but enough where you can do the whole tree trunk. So we're going to start from the bottom. So we're gonna work on two over here first. And what we're gonna do is as we are at the bottom of the trunk, we're gonna have our brush flat like this. And as we work our way up, we're gonna slowly turn the brush until at the very top we're working more with just the skinny part. That way we have a wider trunk at the base and um, skinnier at the top. So that's what we're gonna do. Um, Start your trunk smaller than you might want it because you can always add more to it, but it's really hard to take it away. So I'm just going to come down here and it's going to be flat. And tree trunks are not straight, so we're going to do little curves in here. And when I get about halfway, I'm going to start to turn my brush and bring it up like that. So you'll see I have my first one here. It's not solid. I'll have to go over with a little more paint but at least you got an outline of where it's gonna be. As long as you have something to start with, then you can always work with it. And then I'm gonna do the same exact thing right beside it. It's gonna kind of form a V. So I'm gonna start just halfway through the bottom of this trunk, but I'm gonna go up this way. And I'm just going to make little bumps, not putting my hand straight. And that's going to be that one there. And all I'm doing is I'm just going to go back and just kind of fill in where it's a bit see-through. And this is also where you can start to make it a tiny bit thicker if you feel like some parts were too thin. And then we have our first two. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna do all the white uh, trunks first, and then we'll continue on, then we'll come back and we'll give them some character by adding accents and shadows and highlights and all that fun stuff. But right now we have these two. Then I'm gonna go um, just a bit above half and I'm gonna go beside it. And I'm just gonna put in a tiny one. So you don't have to start your brush completely flat. You can start it a little bit turned and kind of work up from there. And as you come down, if you find it's a bit too skinny on the end, you can always add a little bit of thickness down here. And when I'm done uh, painting these trees, I will hold it up so you can see where they're placed. And I'm going to do two beside it, a little bit further up. Kind of the same way that I did um, this one here. So into a V.
And then another one right here, a little further down. Two of you again. And then two more, just basically a little lower than halfway started. Just like that. So that'll be all our white ones. And I'll hold it closer so you can see. I'll hold up what we're painting there, Linda, you can see. So this is what it's going to look like here. Okay, so what we're going to do next is we're going to work on the black trees. So we're just going to use the same brush and then our black paint that's already on our plate. And if I'm moving too fast, just let me know in the comments. But I'll just keep going unless you say I'm going too fast. So we're just going to load up the same way with just the black. And we're going to put... Um, Kind of like this same kind of tree but just back here so i'm just going to start down there and go up and as i go up i'm just turning my brush so it's skinnier and same with here and it's okay if your trees overlap i'm gonna have the black one overlapping the white here so we're starting halfway through the bottom and then we will come up here. You're welcome, Linda. And I'm just going over again. If I miss anything that's kind of doesn't have enough paint, I'm just kind of going over that. So when we add in our shadows and our highlights, these trees that look like V's here, we're going to be able to see clearly that one is over top the other. So right now they're just looking like big V's, but they will look better after. And then I'm just going to draw two little skinny um, black ones here beside the white one. And for the ones up here, I'm mostly using the brush like this way here, just so it's, I don't want it flat. I'm gonna use it this way, just so it's a little bit of a skinnier edge, just so you're not getting too thick of uh, trunks. If you also, if you find like this is a bit too thick, then you can always use something like this too on the side, like that. This is just a flat head brush, it's just a tiny one. Either or work, I've used both before. I just find for when you're doing like the birch trees for this uh, type of brush, the filbert brush, just they look more realistic. I'm just going to do two skinny ones beside it. 
And like I said, you can always stick in the base after. We got those two. And then beside this one, I'm going to do one right beside it. It also helps to your amount of hand pressure you, you're using. So when we're at the base, I'm putting a little more pressure because it's okay that it's going to be a little bit thicker. And then as I move up, it's just I put a little bit less pressure. That way your brush isn't pushing down so hard. You're not getting as thick of lines. And really, hand pressure just comes with practice. And then I'm going to add one a little further up over here so it looks a little further back. And then I'm going to have um, two coming right down from here. So just a little bit higher than this last one, but over here. And then we're going to have one big one coming all the way from down here and kind of crossing over this one a bit at the top. Just like that. Oh, thanks, Jackie. I appreciate that. <laughs> Thank you. I try to give off a relaxed presence while painting because painting is supposed to be relaxing. Um, I get a lot of people who paint for the first time and they really, they never picked up a brush. So they're anything but relaxed because they're panicked that it's not going to look good or um, that they won't know the techniques or or maybe they don't know the techniques and they just because painting is just practice right so the first time I ever picked up a brush it wasn't pretty but it's that's how you get better right so I think I just always try to give off that sense that it doesn't matter where you're starting from just start where you are so don't compare yourself to mine don't compare yourself to anybody's um just enjoy the process and know you're learning as you go um there's lots of better artists than me that i could compare myself to but then i would just freak out so <laughs> we don't want to do that we just want to be where we are and then just compare yourself to yourself and look at paintings from your past and look at as you go along that's what i've done and i see like oh i learned this technique and i practiced it and i see that that's where i went wrong back then and and i got better and that's all you can really do is be better than yourself every day. So that's where I'm coming from, or that's what I'm trying to teach anyways, confidence in painting through practice. There's no judgment over here, that's for sure. Okay, so... Um, we're gonna do some brown tree trunks when we're done that. I'm gonna keep going, I'm gonna do the brown ones. Like I said, if you're falling behind, just tell me to slow down, I'll drink some more tea. I never complain about having to drink more tea, so. We're gonna go, same brush, and we're gonna go into the just brown. 
and there's not really any too big of trees that are brown in this painting so we're just going to keep the paint on the edge of the brush we're not going right in and going crazy just on the tip and i think pretty much every tree trunk is going to start being skinny so we've got two in here Just trying to see a little bit further up than these. Like I said, you don't have to be perfect here. You can be doing it completely in different spots. Everybody sees it different, so. And then we're gonna do one right beside it. I love doing these trees because we don't have to care if our hand is shaking because they're not even anyways. We don't want them to look even. So we can use that to our advantage. And then I didn't leave a ton of room here. I made my V a bit bigger than in my example. So I'm just going to personally put um, one brown one in here. I have three actually in there, but I didn't leave that much space. So just work with what you have. Like I said, this is, these are freehand paintings. They're not always going to be exact um, because you can't really pinpoint exactly the space you put everything, right? So just work with it. I'm going to put one in here, this tiny one in the back. But if you have more space, you can fill it up. And don't be afraid to crisscross your trees. Put one over here. I'm just going to throw a couple in here. So those are all my trees. I'm going to give you guys some time to catch up. I'm going to go clean up my water and I will be right back. So take your time. I'll leave this here so you can see how all the trees are placed. I'll move it a bit closer for you and I'll be right back. Okay, I'm just going to push this back. There we go. 
And just let me know in the comments if you're ready to move on. Christy says, would love to be painting with you right now, but I have to go to work. I'm in Australia. What time is it now? Six, is it 6.50 in the morning, like a.m. there? Or is it exactly 12 hours difference? Okay, I have one thumbs up. I'm going to wait for a few more. I don't know. I have, I don't know if everybody that's watching is painting, but... I'll wait for a few more. Yeah, six thirty. Yeah, okay. I thought I've had last my last live. I had some some um, women in Australia, and they're like, "It's too early to paint." <laughs> like, I don't think I'd be painting at six thirty a.m. either. So it's okay. <laughs> there will be a replay though. As soon as this video is done, I'm gonna replay it. Um, and then it'll be up for quite a while. So you can always jump back on and paint it another day. Okay, I'm starting to see some hearts. I'm still going to just wait a couple more minutes just for a few more. I don't want anyone to feel like they're rushing. Two minutes, please. Yep, yeah, no problem. I will wait a couple more minutes. So while I'm waiting, I see there's quite a few thumbs up and hearts. While I'm waiting, I just wanted to um, let you know that I did create a group if you were interested in joining. Um, it's called Created to Create with Artistic Crest, and it's just where we post all our paintings from paint nights. You can post paintings that you've done for other people's paint nights or that you've just done at home on your own. So I'll put that in the comments and I'll just pin it. And if you just want to join, you can just ask to join and I'll let you in. But um yeah, it's just a community where we can show our art and, you know, not, there's no judgment there. And you can ask questions if you need, have any questions that you need answers to or anything like that. Okay, so I pinned it to the top there. Um, you'll have to, I don't have the link for it. Uh, you'll have to actually go and just type that in if you're searching for it, but it'll pop up there. You'll see my face. I think my face is up there on it. But Okay, so I'm going to move on. Uh, what we're going to do next is we're going to work on our mushrooms. So we're just going to work on doing the outline right now and just kind of getting a base of where we want it, what the shape is, and then we can worry about filling it in after. So we're going to use white and I am going to use just the edge of my filbert brush. I'm going to just put it in the water and then just kind of smooth it out just so that it's skinny on top, just so we can have an edge to work with. Okay, so what we are basically doing is this mushroom here, it's really just a triangle with round edges. So if we just look at it for its shape and not everything that's going on here, you're just going to see it's a basically a triangle, but we're just rounding the edges. I come up a bit 
in the middle and then I'm just rounding the edges. So that's all we're going to do. If you need to draw it on first, go ahead. Um, a lot of things I paint, I usually draw on first just to make sure I have it in my place. For this though, I just painted it on, but we're going to do this brush here. We're going to use it the skinny way and we're just going to dunk the edge in. That way we only have the edge that's got paint on it. We have a bit more control then. And we're just going to play. So it's going to be here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. Um, it's going to take up basically like one third of the page if you're looking at it this way. So even if you wanted to put a pinpoint here, we can put a little dot there. And then we can come down here and we can put another little dot where we're going to round it. And then this side over here is going over this branch. So we can always just put a little dot right there too. So we can kind of see we have our triangle points. And then really what we're going to do is just connect the dots. Now in the middle here, it's not going to be straight across. We're going to like a mushrooms kind of, you know, mushroom isn't straight. So we're just going to take and find the center and go up a little bit. And we're just going to put another little tiny dot there. So what we're doing is putting our brush down, just so find your dot, put, place your brush down, and then you're just going to follow to the next one and round it. Same with over here. And this shape can always be altered after, but this is just our base to start. We're going to find that one and we're going to round. So we're rounding rounding and then as we come down here we are just slightly going up and then back down and like I said we can always come in here if we find like this is too pointy because we do have we have play here so I can come up a bit more if I want I can make it a bit bigger And that's what we have. So I'm just going to fill it in. I'm going to fill it in with white to give it a base because then that pink is going to pop when we bring it in. If we just do the pink over the brown, it'll still look pink, but it's just going to be a bit more dull. So I'm just going to put a very light coat of paint. Don't go thick at all. Um, just very light. You just want to kind of have just something to start with. It's almost like a primer, right? When you paint a room, you put primer first. So that's what we're doing here. And just make sure your paint, just use a little bit of time. Make sure your paint is spread out. You don't want to have it clumping. Like right here already, my paint is basically dry. And I just put it on. So that's how thin of a coat we want. Okay, so this is when we can always take a step back, kind of look and see, do we want it bigger? Do we need it to be a little bit of a different shape? And you can always just take the edge and you can alter it how you want it. Always starting a bit smaller than what we want, because then we can come out like that and add some to it. When I'm painting these mushrooms, I'm using my brush on a 45 degree angle. So my brush is in, the only time I used it like this was when I was doing the outline. After that, it's been like this the whole time. I'm just painting on a 45 degree angle. And that's how you're going to get it spread around without having any clumps. So once we've got our initial shape, I'm going to come over here and I'm going to do the same exact thing, but just with this little baby mushroom. So now we're going to add that guy in there. So once again, just dunking the tip of the brush in. And then we can pinpoint our three spots we want. So this one's a bit lower. So I'll just put, let's say, one there. And then it does cross over here. So we can do there and there and up a little bit in the center. So we have all our points here. And then that's when we just connect them. 
So remember rounded edges, it's rounded. And then up a bit in the middle and then back down. And we're just filling that in. Okay, so that's what we'll have so far. And I'll let you, uh, catch up there and then we'll draw in the stems so just always remember you can always just pinpoint your spots first that's why I did I knew what's what's my what's the shape it's closest to so that mushroom in particular is closest to a triangle so I knew that if I just pinpoint out my dots where I would want it, then I can just simply follow that. It's kind of like, kind of like tracing after you've, you know, the dot to dot. And really in, in my mind, that's how it becomes the most easy um, and broken down. So yeah, I'll just give these guys a few minutes there. And when you are done that, you can just clean that brush off. We're gonna put it aside for a few minutes after. Okay, so just keep sending me, you know, the routine, the thumbs up, the likes. Diane says, watch, just watching. I came in late. I will do it when you're done. Loving it so far. Awesome. Perfect. And everybody send me pictures after. I love to do, um, I love to do these painting trains <laughs> where I put them up on video and everybody gets to see all these paintings and it gets people to want to paint and they always look, everyone always comments on how great everyone's looks. So send it to me. You can, you can either send it to me in a private message or you can send it to me right in this, right in this feed here when we're all finished. Okay. So we're going to move on and all we're doing is we're just going to add our little, I don't even know what you call this. I guess it's part of the stem. 
down here, down here, and then just the stem. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our detail brush for this, and I'm still using white. And what's it, what it's going to be is another kind of triangle base. So we're going to come out. This is the center. So we're going to go about halfway from the edge to the center. We're going to pick out halfway and we're going to go a little bit down and out. So we'll just put a little dot there. And then we're going to do the same thing on the other side. So we've got our center of our mushroom. We're going to come out to about halfway between this end and the center and just put a little dot. And we can do that for the small one too. So I find my center. And you know what? If your thing isn't completely in the center, that's okay. So just follow your center dot, center line here, and then just go in the middle. So it's going to follow the shape of your mushroom either way. And then the center to the center here. And a little dot. So right now we just have our four dots, just kind of pinpointing where we're going to trace next. And we're just going to take this brush here and we're going to start at the actual mushroom and we're going to come down on an angle. So we're going to start in a bit from the dot and come down on an angle. We're going to round again. So we're rounding. Same thing, we're coming out at an angle here, like it's a triangle again, and rounding. And then we're just making this wavy, so we're just gonna go up and down. There's no particular amount of waviness you need to have. It's kind of looking like the squid I did with everybody the other day. And the same thing with this little one. So in from, in a little bit, down and around, down and around, and then just up and down here. And that's what we have so far. And what we're going to do is we're going to color that in as well, um, but leave a tiny bit of space here. So I'll show you that way we can see where our shape of our mushroom still is. Oops. So if we come here, I'm going to paint here. I'm going to leave that tiny little space in between. This is going to be shadowed anyways, so it's going to get filled in. But that way we still can see the line of our mushroom. We don't lose it. And we know exactly where it's at for when we're going to color it in. So we can do that for both of them. Let me just leave another little tiny space here. And you'll see there, you can see still that line where that mushroom is. And then you can go ahead and color it in. that and this one here and if you have a smaller uh smaller brush in this you can always go back to that round headed brush and fill it in if you find it's taking too long i just a number three holds a good amount of paint so i'm pretty good here but if you have a smaller detail brush you might want to use a the round one to fill it in
and then we can just draw the stem in. The stems, I did not do stri completely straight. This is kind of a whimsical painting, so I just um, take your brush and just, I kind of did little waves. Like that there. And same with the little one. There's not going to be much of a stem for the little ones. So you don't have to go too crazy, but... And then same exact thing here. So I'm going to take, if I can hold this up here, I'm going to take and I'm going to leave a small line underneath that. Just so we can see where each new section starts. And then that's when you can color the rest in. When you're done that, you can wash off your detailed brush. You'll see here, we just have our, the outline of our mushrooms. But now you have your placement and your shape. So now you can just work basically on layering and getting all your shadows in um, and your highlights. And that's really the most important part for acrylic is really just the layering. Putting more and more layers on to achieve that look. So I'll wait for a few minutes here for everyone to catch up. And my mushroom here is dry already. Um, if yours is wet, we're going to put our first pink layer on. So if yours is wet, just give it a quick blow dry. Just because if you don't, it will just take off the bottom layer when you put that top layer on and then it's going to create kind of a disaster. So, um, just make sure it's really dry before we start doing that top layer. So when you guys are ready, just give me a thumbs up and I'll continue on. Thank you. 
Okay, we got some thumbs up. Just wait for a couple more thumbs up and I'll keep going. Like I said, if for some reason you have to finish up a little bit, like a, a part of it a little bit later, this is going to be replayed immediately after. So you can go back, you can fast forward or rewind and rewind. Yes, I'm from the 80s. <laughs> we don't, this is not a VHS. <laughs> you know what I mean. <laughs> Okay, so the next colors we are going to need on our plate is that magenta pink or whatever pink you have there. And we're going to have some white. So I'll let you put that on there. And then we're just going to take and mix, uh, pull a little bit of that pink aside. Just a bit of it. And we're going to mix some white into it. We want to make a little bit of a lighter pink. So I'm going to mix that up and then I will show you. almost going to look like a light raspberry. So we've got our magenta here that I mixed some white into the magenta and we just have like, it's like a light raspberry, kind of a toss between that and a, it's coming across kind of as cotton candy in the, in the camera, but just a lighter version of pink is good. Anything you can get will work perfect. And we're just gonna take, we have the round brush. That's what I mixed it with. I'm gonna wash it off because we're not starting with that color. Okay, so we're gonna go into that magenta and we're just going to paint in the mushroom. So just the top part of the mushroom, not these lower parts here. And you can leave a little tiny bit of that white rim kind of showing just here and there. And we're gonna have to add a couple layers of this in, but they'll have to be dry in between. So we're just gonna worry about our first layer right now. And thinner layers are always better. So we can always add more layers. Um, it comes across better if the layers are thin and we add more layers rather than trying to cake it on and putting less layers. So that's how acrylic really works the best. Um, I know with oil paints, you can, not an expert at all in oil painting, um, but I know you can add it on thicker and that's kind of, a good effect you get with oil but with acrylic it's better to just kind of go thin and then put more layers Okay, we can do the same thing to the small mushroom too. Like I said, you don't have to leave a white edge all the way around. You can go right to the edge, but just some places, just kind of let that white sneak through. It kind of gives it a highlight.
Okay, and we have to let that layer dry before we can add anything to it. So I'm just gonna wash my brush when I'm done. So the next thing we're going to be doing is painting in this little guy down here and then this one. Um, we're going to be using black and this same filbert brush. But we're not going to be painting in the whole entire thing black. So I just kind of want to show you. Um, I'm going to paint it a bit closer so you can see exactly what I'm doing. So we'll start with the big mushroom and we're just going to do this underlying stem part here. So we're just going to put a little bit of black on our brush. And we're going to outline so we can go right, right to where we kind of left that space now at the top. And we're just going to outline that black there and wrap it around. And what I'm doing is I'm just taking and just kind of sh stroking my brush downwards from that top line. If you can see that. So I just outlined the top and then I kind of went around and then I just pulled that paint down. But you're still going to be able to see a little bit of the white here and that's what we want. So just kind of pull it down. We're going to do the same thing with the little one. We're just outlining the top. Filling in that gap and kind of wrapping around here, just around that first curve and then just very lightly pulling down the paint. So you will see I have jaggedy edges there. Same with there. And I'm going to do the same thing to the stem. So I'm outlining right on that line that we left. And then all the way down this side here. And then we're just going to pull, we're just pulling the paint down and kind of in from there. And same with the small one. If you have to use a smaller brush for this, go ahead. You can use the detail brush and just kind of do the same exact thing. So that's what we have.
And I'll just give everyone a couple minutes. Okay, so we're gonna let our mushroom dry. Um, then we can go in and we can start putting second layers. But what we're gonna work on now is just our grass underneath. Um, and then we can highlight these tree trunks. So um, we're gonna be using our pointed brush, detail brush. And we're just gonna start with black. So what I'm gonna do is underneath every single one, I'm just gonna draw kind of a jaggedy edge to kind of look like there's grass growing there. And then we'll put our grass actually sprouting up. But, so for example here, I'm gonna leave the ones down here because they're too low. You're not gonna see that. We're just gonna put some grass after. But let's say we start up here. I'm just gonna kind of just draw a jaggedy edge, just like that. Same with along here. And it doesn't have to be perfect. You can even have these ones meet, like it's going all across. You're not gonna see much of this part anyways. So I'm just coming out a bit, a bit wider than the trunk and then going right into it and then back down. So I'll hold it closer in a minute and you can see it's not complete. They're not completely straight. I'm kind of going up and down with my brush, kind of just moving it a little bit up and down as I go across. Should just kind of like that. And we're just gonna take that same brush with black and we're just gonna put little wisps of grass. So I'm just putting the tip of my brush on that line and then I'm just gonna flick up all over in every direction. I'm not gonna go straight up. So I'll just be kind of here and there like this. And I'll see closer. It's kind of hard to see far away. And I'm just going like this way, then that way. And they're all different lengths. Just like that. So we're gonna do that to all of them. And don't worry about the ones that are black on black. We're gonna be doing a little bit of brown over top and a little bit of blue, so it's gonna pop through. This is really just the background shadowing for those blades of grass. Mm 
And those blades of grass can go in front of other tree trunks. It's no problem. They can kind of blend together a bit. Like I said, once we start putting the lighter layers on top, you'll see the separation. You can make some taller. They could be coming out from the back. And the shorter ones could be in the front. And I'm just very light handed here. I'm just basically just taking and just, just flick, 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 flick. So very lightly. And down here where we didn't put any, I'm going to put some too. This time I just put a couple, I don't want to go too much over the mushroom, so I'll just put a couple of the side here, nothing too crazy. And once you once you're done that and you and you um go to the next layer just start at the first one you did and it'll be dry enough if it's a little bit wet and they kind of blend a bit that's no problem and we're just going to do the same exact thing with the brown but we're going to go a little bit we're not going to try to go right over top we're going to try to leave some so we can see some of the black behind so when i go in here It'll kind of be just hit and miss. And you'll see there, you can still see the black behind the brown. And we're just gonna go over top of all the black and just do that with the brown next. And you'll notice it really shows up good for the ones that we did the black on black because there was really nothing to highlight that, but now there is. So you'll see the difference here. If I show you up close. Now you can kind of see 
for this one here. There's some dimension now. So I'll let everyone catch up. Just let me know when you're done and we can move on. Is everybody finding it pretty easy to follow along? Are you enjoying how yours is coming along so far? Hi, Tammy. Are you painting tonight, Tammy? Vivian says, I am really enjoying all of this. I love how it's turning out. Awesome. I knew what you meant. <laughs> That's usually how my typing comes out too. <laughs> I'm typing so fast and I'm so excited to get out what I want to say. Nothing makes sense. Okay, I'll give it one more minute and then we'll move on. That's okay. I saw Tammy. I saw you were at the gym. I think like at six or uh, five. So I was like, I don't know if she's gonna be painting tonight, but there'll be a replay up if you want to do it. Okay. So what we're gonna do next is we're gonna put all our little highlights into the trees. So our white trees are the birch trees. So we're gonna start with those, and um, we're gonna have our pointed brush here. And we're just going to put it in some black. And what we're going to do is we're going to get these little, all these little black lines in here put in. And really all that is, is doing two, one or two lines from the edge just into the center. So... I'm just starting my brush off on the edge and I just do a couple lines and then I'll alternate to the other side and I'll do maybe one. There's no pattern. Um, just do whatever you feel is looking good. So I'll do a couple here. They don't have to be the same size at all. Do one and one. We don't want there to be any particular pattern. When you look at trees, there's no, no particular pattern. They're just all different in their own way. So we're going to go all the way to the top. And so that's going to be the first one done there. 
And we're just gonna do that for all the white ones. June says, yes, liking this and the timing is pretty good too. Good, good. When I first started doing this online, I was super fast because I can't really see what everyone's doing. And uh, I'm probably just nervous a bit too, but now that I'm more used to it, I know just to lay back a bit and take it easy, go slow. I used to write myself notes at the beginning saying, go slow. So every time I looked at the screen, there'd be a note hanging there saying, go slow. <laughs> because I, I would paint like a maniac because I'm, I'm used to just, you know, I would do orders or it was really just basically being time efficient, right? But when we're doing something like this, it's relaxing. Also not being in person, I can't see how fast you're going. So yes, Diane, the, the white trees are birch trees. Or at least that's the effect I'm going for here. So it'll be easier for you if when you're doing these lines to always work from the outside in. That way you know where you put your brush down, it's not going to go outside of that tree trunk. You're putting it down on the edge and then just going in towards the center. Okay, so we'll see here all our white ones are done. So what we'll do next is we're just going to put some highlights on the on these black trees. Um, we're going to do that with br our brown. And it's not going to be done the same way. We're going to use the same brush, but we're just going to go kind of hit or miss up and down the trunk. So I'll move this closer so you can see. So I've got my skinny brush with brown on it. And I'm just going on the edge here. And I'm just kind of highlighting 
hit or miss. Not You don't want to highlight all the way up. It's just like the light is kind of hitting here and there. So we're going to do that with all the black ones. So see here, it's just a faint highlight. And what I did here is where that V is, you can't really see because we have these um, kind of like the brush going on, but where it crosses, I kind of put just a highlight a bit lower just so you can see there's actually a trunk crossing over this one. Um, you'll be able to see it a little bit better up here because the, the grass isn't as high. But for example, let's say this one here, it kind of just looks like one big tree trunk here. So what we can do is kind of highlight which one's going over. So if we want this one to come over, we can kind of put just a highlight there and you'll see now that that trunk's kind of in front. Okay, so then I'm going to put a little bit of, the, of that light blue on my plate, and I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to put a little bit, just a little bit on the brown trunks, and I'm just going to highlight a little bit too on the blue and the white. But it doesn't have to be as intense as we've done, just a slight touch here and there of the blue, just to kind of give it that whimsical feeling. So just like a little bit of that blue is just popping through. So if we start here, we'll just be very light. So you'll see there just kind of popping through here and there. And I did a little bit on the white too. Um, I did it the same way that I did the black trunks. So I didn't keep it going like a birch tree. I kind of just gave a little bit of a blue highlight here and there. So you'll see. It's just a little bit there and there. Just wherever you feel you need it.
Manda from Newfoundland. That's cool. I always wanted to go to Newfoundland. It looks so beautiful. Deanne says, what paper booklet are you using? Like to paint on, you mean? Just one of these here. So this is on Amazon. I got mine on Amazon. I'm sure if you went to a Michaels near you, um, they would have the same thing. I don't know what the price difference would be between the two. This is about $19 Canadian um, for 60 sheets. And this is 11 by 14. I think this is the biggest they come, but you can also get um, like just larges. And I think there's also mediums that I've seen on Amazon. Monica says here from Ontario. Awesome. Which part of Ontario are you from? Okay, so I'm also just going to add a little bit of that blue into the grass that we did. Just a couple highlights. Southern, okay, London. Okay, yeah, so I'm about a two hour drive from you then, which isn't too far. Hello from Missouri. Hello. You got people all over, that's awesome. Okay. So we're just going to start working on the mushroom again. We're going to do a second layer. Um, we're going to put in our highlights in a couple touches and then we'll be done. So we'll probably be done in the next 15 minutes. So I'm going to go back into my um, Filbert brush here. And we're just going to put a second coat here of that magenta color. This is when you're going to really see, if you have this exact color, so when, when you're really going to see it pop. That second coat always is amazing. We're going to blend a little bit of that lighter pink that we mixed earlier. So we want to make sure that when we're putting our raspberry on here, that it's like it's wet. It's not going to be too dry. You want to get a good amount on just so that when we go to blend it, it blends up into it. Branch Ontario too. Wow, that's awesome. Got lots of Ontario people here tonight. 
Okay, so we have our second coat on here. You can really see the difference between the two. We're gonna go right into that light pink. And we're just gonna put a little bit. So we're gonna put our brush in and just kind of dab it off on the side of our plate, just so we'd have just a light coat. And we're just gonna come up here and kind of just blend upward. So we're just taking that paint and just kind of blending it upward here. And I'm just going to wipe off any excess paint that I have. I'm going to go back into that magenta and I'm going to brush back this way. It kind of blends in there. I'm going to do the same exact thing with the small one. So we're just painting it all in first. We're going to go into that light pink, just grab a tiny bit, and we're going to work from this side just pulling up over to the side, just like that. And we're going to put a little bit more magenta and just kind of go back this way a bit. And when I'm doing this, I'm really light handed. I'm not pushing down hard. We don't want to be scraping the paint off of it, we want to just kind of give that highlight. So very light handed, we'll, if that will place it on top instead of scraping it off. And I'm just going to come back here. I'm just, mine personally, I just want a little bit lighter. If yours is already light enough, then don't have to worry about doing this part. I just feel like mine's a little bit dark still. So when I've done this, I'm just going to go over exactly what I did for anyone that's still working on it and give everybody a couple minutes to catch up. So I will tell you again what I did here. Okay. Okay. So we move it closer. So what we did was we just put a second coat of magenta on the whole entire mushroom cap here. And then we took that light pink that we had mixed together earlier. And we just started at this edge and just kind of brushed up towards the side, kind of keeping that shape. So the shape of the mushroom, we followed it. So I would brush up this way and then just kind of go along with the shape of it. So see how this is curved like this? then I would take that highlight and curve up like that because the highlight is naturally going to follow the shape of whatever you're painting. So once I did that, so I had my magenta, my light pink this way, then I just grabbed a little bit more magenta and I just went back this way. And you kind of see we get kind of like an ombre effect here. So I'll let you catch up for a couple minutes there, and then we'll move on. Just throw me some thumbs up when you're ready to move on.
Okay, I'm seeing some thumbs and some hearts. I'll wait for a couple more. So the next color we're going to put on our plate is some warm beige. And you don't need a ton of this. We're only going to be using it just to highlight the mushroom stems. So just a little bit will work. Just make sure your, your filbert brush is washed out really good. I'm just gonna back this up a bit. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in with some beige. I don't have any on my brush yet. And we're just going to take the edge of where we left and we're just going to kind of like swoop up in the opposite direction of what we did with the black by pushing down. So we're just gonna have a little bit of paint here, nothing too heavy. We basically wanna see the bristles still in behind that paint. And we're just gonna take and put it down and kind of just flick up along that edge. And that's gonna give us that highlight there. And we're doing the same thing. So I'm putting more paint on my brush. I'm wiping any excess off because I want to be able to see uh, the bristles through that paint. I don't want it all clumped on. And I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to follow the edge here and I'm just going to put it down and flick out towards the black. And then I will do the same exact thing for the small mushroom. Uh, yes, yeah, for sure. I can repeat. Okay. So all I did was I just took a very small amount. I'm going to put some more on my brush so you can see. Very small amount of that beige color. You can see the bristles still through it. So if when you put in the paint, just kind of wipe it off. So what I do is just stick it in and then kind of just wipe it off here just so I have it just barely on there. And I'm just going to line the edge of my brush with the white part that's left. And I'm just going to lightly flick upward so I have it on there I'm just kind of flicking upward lightly all around the edge here just to give that highlight basically the opposite way that we we went downwards with the black we're just going to flick up with this beige color And that part is this beige here, the warm beige. Okay. 
You're welcome, Valerie. Does anyone else tonight have any pets with them while they're painting? <laughs> I always have my dog. He knows when I get my table set up that I am going to paint, so he goes and he lays down on the bed right beside me. <laughs> I know, when, I don't know if Tammy's still here, but she always has her dog in her pictures with her when she sends me her paintings. It's funny how fast they get to know the routine of things. So I'll just put it closer one more time so you can kind of see the edges are not even so when I'm flicking up with my brush I am leaving the bristle strokes in the paint and or in, on the painting and that's basically I'm achieving that because I don't have too much paint if I had too much paint it would just be big round blobs when you flick up so when you have just a little bit of paint when you can see your br bristles through then you know when you put that on there and you flick up, you're going to be able to see those bristle strokes because there's not too much paint on there. And that's how I achieved that look. Okay. So what we're going to do next is we're going to put on these little magical lights <laughs> that we have in here these little fairy dots and how we're going to do that is just take any one of your brushes i would take one of the smaller ones and on the end we're just going to use the end of the brush so we can go in i see i've already done that because there's paint on there i didn't wipe off we're just going to go in the white so i just dab into the white there and I'm just going to pick a spot. I'm not going to push all the way down. I just want to put a little dot of paint. So a little dot like that. You can see it right, right there. And I'm just going to take my finger and I'm just going to go in a round circle and just work my way out until it dries. Once it's dry on my finger and on the canvas, and I know to stop. And that's how I get that. And I'm just going to do those every so often. Kind of fill in some space and just keep going in a circle until the paint is dry you can put these wherever you want i'm not putting them in the exact same spot as my last painting i'm kind of just filling in areas that are a little bare And you can do the same with that light pink that we already mixed. You can put a couple in there too. The light pink. And then I'm just going to go in and I'm just going to dot a couple dots here and there. So I've got white. I'm going to do some white ones and I'm going to do some blue ones. And these ones we're just leaving alone. We're not rubbing them with our finger. These ones are just going to be tiny, tiny little lights. 
So just a few white ones and then we'll put in a couple blue ones. Okay. So once we got that done, the last thing we're going to work on is just the dots on our mushrooms. So all we have to do is put um, some little brown dots and then we're just going to put some white dots over. So we'll work on that next. And because this is the end of the video, I'm going to, I'm just going to keep going because I'm going to replay it right after. So if you are falling behind a little bit, you can just go right back and just catch up. You don't have to start from the beginning. So I'm just going to use my little pointed brush in my brown. And I'm only placing dots along the top. So I'm going to follow kind of the shape, how it kind of goes up in the middle of the mushroom, but I'm not going to put dots down here, just at the top. If your mushroom is still a little bit wet, just give it a quick blow dry. And, and I'm just going to make a little bit of bigger dots than I would at the end of uh, my brush because I'm just going to go back and dot after with this. So just a tiny bit bigger. And I'm just going in a circle motion, kind of making like little ovals. And usually what I like to do for spacing apart is I kind of make a triangle with these. So um, if there's, let's say, two dots here, then I'll just put one here. And that kind of makes its own triangle. And I kind of just keep going along like that. Just for spacing. We can do that on the big mushroom and the small mushroom. So it's kind of hard to see there, but we've got our little dots there.
Now we're just keeping them just to the top down. Don't, we don't really go past halfway, kind of keeping that shape of the mushroom. Now we're just gonna take, just like we did the dots on the, for the background, we're gonna go into the white and we're just gonna dot each one a little off center. So we don't, we want a little bit of the brown to be showing in the back. So we'll just keep them all to one side. So if, you, if you're doing them on the left-hand side, then we'll just kind of keep them to the left-hand side of that brown dot. And that kind of gives it a little shadow behind. So for the, for the dots for the mushrooms, I used the espresso brown first, and I just did little dots, just with the end of the brush. So with the bristles, and I just kind of went ovals with the espresso first, and then over top, I'm just dotting them with white, with just the end, just like we did the background. Put that there so you can see. Move this down a bit. There we go. And I'm just gonna sign my, put my initials at the bottom. So when you finish up, put your initials, take a step back, be proud of your work. I'll just leave it there for a couple minutes so you can see it while you're finishing up. I see in my original here, I just added a couple little black accents. You don't have to do this. Um, this sometimes just makes it pop. I'm just using the skinny brush. I'm just gonna add a couple little accents just around the edges here. Same with here, just kind of hit or miss, not the whole thing. 
and it kind of just makes it pop a bit. Same with the little one. Mm -hmm. Tina says pretty. <laughs> it is a pretty painting. Okay, I'm going to back it up a little bit and I'm just going to show you. Um, so my next paint night will be next Friday. I'm just going to show you what we're painting. And this is a good one for kids too. So this one here is what we're going to be painting um, next Friday night. This one is $10 to join. Um, there is an event up if you wanted to buy tickets. So there's a link under the event. It's $10 per screen. So if you want to bring your kids or you want to invite a friend over and paint, um, it's only $10 per screen. So I'm not charging per person. So this one will be happening next Friday. And there's a little bit of a different technique with this with rulers and stuff like that. So this is a fun one. I think a lot of kids would like this one. And then in the future, there's going to be a couple little challenges. So there's going to be an October challenge. This is my witches be crazy here. And then, and there's sparkle in her hair, you can see. And then this one's beautiful harvest we're going to be doing. So this is going to be a two night paint event. Um, which will also be $10, but it's for both paintings and there'll be pri a prize at the end for the person who submits, um, the most unique painting. And then this one here I have coming up as well for a uh, parent and me paint night. So this will be a free event and I will be painting this with my four-year-old daughter and, uh, feel free to join. I don't have this event up yet. I also don't have the other ones, but they will be up very shortly. So yeah, so thank you very, very much for joining me tonight. I hope everyone had fun. Um, make sure to send me your paintings. I love posting them up. Also, feel free to join my Created to Create uh, with Artisticris group where we can share our paintings as well. And I hope to see you at future events. If you have any questions or comments or you want to leave me some constructive criticism or anything like that, feel free to do so. Um, it's always welcome. So have a great night and I will see you on Friday of next week.